Since Fujifilm cameras have become so popular, their prices have started to skyrocket. But maybe you don't have two grand lying around for a shiny new Fujifilm X100V. Or maybe you have that money lying around but would rather spend it on something useful, like Taylor Swift tickets. <laughs> Anyways, ever since I've swiped the X-T30 right on Tinder and subsequently started a weird sugar daddy relationship between Fujifilm cameras and my wallet, I've been on a quest to find the perfect budget Fuji camera. This is the Fujifilm X-T1 and it was released on this day exactly in 2014. Well, this day exactly when I'm making this video. Not only is it this camera's 10th birthday, but that also means it probably has a well-developed arsenal of fart jokes it uses to wreak havoc on fourth grade. <laughs> Okay, I know why you're here. You want film simulations. The X-T1 has 11 of them, but to be honest, you only need one because classic chrome is by far the best. You can fight me on that in the comments. So today I'm going to discuss if the Fuji X-T1 is still worth it in 2024, a decade after release. On paper, this is a quite impressive camera considering the age. It's got weather sealing and can shoot up to 8 FPS bursts. A couple of days ago I went to film some mountain bike stuff and brought the X-T1 as well to snap a couple of photos in between. Seriously, mountain biking is just hands down my favorite thing to shoot, and the photos from the X-T1 turned out really well. Also a huge thank you to the rider, go follow him on Instagram, he's about 12 times as good on a bike as I could ever be. The body of the Fujifilm X-T1 is super sexy but surprisingly functional. Just like Waldo from the popular children's book, where the f*** is Waldo, I can never f***ing find him. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that has to be one of the worst jokes I've ever made. <laughs> the X-T1's magnesium alloy body feels high quality, but what really surprised me is that this camera is quite small. This caught me off guard considering it was Fujifilm's flagship camera when it was released, and it is significantly smaller than its successors like the X-T3 and X-T4. But despite the X-T1 being really compact, it's interesting how many physical dials and buttons they have fit on the body. As with most of their cameras, Fujifilm did a great job of combining the retro chic of analog SLR cameras with the physical control that pro DSLR cameras offered. You know what isn't retro chic? 2000s fashion, that was just a weird time. As I said, the usability this camera offers resembles that of a 
Pro Body DSLR. Pretty much everything you would want to quickly change can be done physically without having to dig through any menus, which I am a huge fan of. Okay, let me take a deep breath and I'm gonna go through everything on the body. ISO dial, shutter speed dial, exposure compensation wheel, back command dial, front command dial, autofocus mode switch, a switch for changing your metering mode, a switch for changing the shooting mode, and a bunch of additional buttons, but I'm running out of breath. <laughs> That's more physical controls than my much larger Sony camera offers. I especially love the shooting mode dial because it allows you to really quickly go into continuous shooting. Look, nobody says it, but we all know that spray and pray is the most effective method for getting the shot in street photography. <laughs> when you and your friends are once again having a competition for who has the smallest SLR style mirrorless camera, the compactness of the X-T1 is really great. But after the awkwardness of the last competition, my friends and I were told to finally stop and get a grip. A battery grip, that is. The compact body of the X-T1 is perfect if you want to travel with it or just want to use it as an everyday camera, but in my opinion the ergonomics are greatly improved with the battery grip, and you can find them for pretty cheap on the used market. Not only does this give you the ability to shoot vertically much more comfortably, which is perfect for my peanut-sized Instagram brain, but it also gives you a much better horizontal grip on the camera because your ring and pinky finger aren't falling off the bottom anymore. The X-T1's image quality quality is nothing to scoff at, and if somebody does scoff at it, they're probably a snob and spend more time looking at spec sheets than actually taking photos. It has a second generation X-Trans sensor with 16 megapixels and really decent low light performance. Actually for some reason I only shot in low light situations with this camera and I got some really good results. By the way, all of the images in this video are edited with my Analog Vibes or brand new disposable Vibes Lightroom preset pack. These presets allow you to easily get that warm pastel film look or that dark and punchy film look. And you can also use them for a super nice and clean look for street photography or architecture. I've decided to include both packs in a combined bundle now, so you can get both for a heavily discounted price. This video isn't sponsored or anything, so I want to thank every single one of you who picks up one of my preset packs, because you are the sole reason why I can keep this channel running. One thing that really caught me off guard is how good the X-T1's viewfinder is. It has a 2.36 million dot EVF which is super impressive considering this camera is now 10 years old. And what's even more shocking is when you consider that one of Fujifilm's newest cameras, the XS20, has the exact same viewfinder resolution but the X-T1 has a higher magnification so when you look through the viewfinder it's actually bigger than the one on the XS20. So this 10 year old camera gets you a better viewfinder than Fujifilm's modern 1300 euro camera. And to add more salt to this weird Fujifilm soup, the X-T1 is weather resistant and the X-S20 is not. This 10 year old camera is so good that it beats Fujifilm's modern offerings in two significant categories and it does that while costing less than 300 bucks. That's great because now I have more money left to repaint my apartment after I dropped the plate of chili, it subsequently exploded and ruined two walls. Yeah, that was a great day. I'm gonna be honest, if you're looking to buy your first Fujifilm camera out of all the budget Fujis I've tested, this is probably the best one. The X-Pro1 and the X-A5 both have a unique design and the X-Pro1 has the hybrid viewfinder, but they both came with the caveat that they are more expensive because they've been affected by the Fujifilm hype. And if you were willing to take other brands into consideration like Sony, you would likely find better performance for the same price. But the X-T1 turns this around because it offers a superb price to performance ratio and I think you'd have a pretty difficult time finding a better camera for under 300 bucks, no matter the brand. I found a really good deal and got the X-T1 together with the battery grip for 250 euro and it's just stupid how good and fun this camera is for that money. If you want some more stupid fun, why don't you go check out this video of mine that's at least twice as good as this one was. Okay, I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye bye!